you know, it was Dave's second year as head coach, and I really felt like he had um, made a huge impact his first year. And then going into the season, I felt a lot of anticipation just because he felt so confident. You know, just kind of going into that year, um, you know, personally, I, I there's a lot of big shoes to fill. Um, and I used had one of the you know, better quarterbacks come through there, probably, you know, the best. Um, with Chandler Hardish. That was my main concern. I was like, okay, if, let's see what the uh, offense can do. If the offense can fit up points and Jordan Lynch become, it is as good as Chandler, uh, I feel like we have a shot at winning another uh, main championship. I think uh, the offense was the biggest question mark that year um, with Jordan stepping in, uh, replacing Chandler, and then the offensive line being uh, you know, all new, really. Yeah, I just remember that summer being like everybody hitting it hard, and seven on sevens like it was really, really more like in super intense. Going into the 2012 year, um, we knew what what we could do. Like we knew that we could win. We knew that we knew how to win, and we knew that's what we wanted. Welcome to the All State Game of the Week from Soldier Field in Chicago where the Iowa Hawkeyes take the field today, looking for their 12th consecutive season opening victory and taking on a Northern Illinois team, which is riding the nation's longest win streak in the FBS nine in a row. Obviously being competitors, we wanted to win that game, um, but just going in there and, and, and having the belief that, you know, we, we could compete with anyone in the, in the, in the country. Um, and, and we did for, for four quarters of that game. That was kind of my first year of, you know, taking over, taking over the, the program, the offense, and kind of step into the leadership role. Hawkeyes lead 3-0, but it's the Huskies who've been running all over so far today. They've done such a nice job of running the quarterback in between the tackles, and it's no hesitation, Tom. He's north and south, and he's running through Iowa would-be tacklers. He's carrying people with him. He's had so much success on the six carries he's had today, especially when we get down into the red zone when you don't account for the quarterback running the football. That's where he can be the most effective. Six carries for Jordan Lynch today, five for the rest of the backfield, including wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis. Akeem Daniels is in there now with Keith Harris Jr., the freshman from Chicago who burst on the scene two weeks ago. To the left side, to the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies, Keith Harris Jr. Once we got the ball rolling and, and get, got the jitters out, for me anyway, uh, I knew we, we had the talent and we were, you know, going in the right direction to be successful that season. Nikas and Scheffler in the backfield as tight ends. They go man coverage again, right back to Hyde spot. Caught! What a grab over the shoulder by Martel Moore! It was a cool atmosphere. You know, I'm a Chicago guy, so I grew up a Bears fan, and being able to, to complete my first start in Soldier Field was really cool. You have qualities that you bring to the table, and you have to be able to fit that into the offense. And I think that Jordan Lynch has done that. He knows he can run the football. He knows he can make good decisions. And when you spread Iowa out like they're doing on third and long, you always have to respect the run of the quarterback. Five wide. Here goes Lynch with that run, and he's got a first down and more to midfield. And Jordan Lynch with the biggest gain of the day. Jordan Lynch takes it all the way. It was kind of a crazy way just to start the season. I just thought it was a great opportunity for the defense to go out on there, go out and play that game and try to hold them under uh, 21 points since it was a Big Ten team. I uh, watched a lot of film on that quarterback. In Beaver Stadium today. Vandenberg play action, first deep ball, and it is batted away. Fantastic play by Jimmy Ward coming over from his safety spot to help on Keenan Davids. That's the longest pass attempt of the game for Vandenberg. And we should have beat Iowa. Uh, I think they had, they had a big punt return late in the game that, let, that uh, gave them good field position, and it was Michael Hyde. Ryan Neer will start punt formation with his heels on the back line. Micah Hyde comes up to take it at the 34. He gets a great burst and take it inside the 35. And a big third down coming for the Hawkeyes. Huge third down opportunity here for James Vandenberg. Now, the big question for Northern Illinois, do they bring pressure? They, they brought pressure from the short side of the field last series on a corner blitz. They brought Tyrone Clark a couple times up the middle of the football field. That's the big question right now for Jay. Oh, 
Neiman, the defensive coordinator for the Huskies. Third and eight to the running game. Bullock has room, and Iowa first down, and touchdown! Iowa takes the lead on a third down run by Damon Bullock. Obviously, the first game was it was a huge game. It was Iowa. It was at Soldier Field, and um, and yeah, they scored late. I mean, we we were in it. We were winning, you know, most of the game, and then they they got that late score. I think it kind of lit us up. I mean, we were not happy that we lost the game, especially because um, you know we let them score, and I remember the the play, you know. <laughs> so um, I wasn't on the field, but it was a third down. And, we, we, we ran a blitz, a smoke blitz, and uh, they, they scored. Um, so I think that kind of fire, fired us up because we should have won that game and we wanted to win that game. And so uh, for us, it was like, what do we need to do to make sure that we're not in that position again? I don't like losing, you know, and I used not used to losing um, ever since the program started to get rolling. And here I am as the leader of the team. and. You know, I, obviously I signed up for this, so I'm going to take it very hard when we lose a game. You know, I'm going to look at every play, I'm going to look at every situation and take the blame that I could have done it better. Um, so it wasn't a thing for me of like, you know, after we lost, like I need to work harder, I need to focus. It, it wasn't any of that because I was already working as hard as possible. It was more um, like I let my teammates down and this ain't going to happen again. I'll never forget uh, Coach Doran's face after that game. I mean, it, it, was, it was the most determined look I've ever seen in my life. We had uh, you know, kind of just a, a crazy season overall, just kind of how it started. You know, our, our offensive coordinator at the time, you know, Mike Dunbar had, you know, he, he coached our first game and then he had a leave of absence, and, you, know, um, you know, had cancer and got sick and ended up halfway through the year, ended up passing away. So it was kind of a, crazy way just to start the season losing the first game to Iowa on a, on a close close kind of game at Soldier Field that we, we let it you know, kind of slip away and we thought we had it um, then you know Rod Carey took over and there we go you know we're racking up 13 straight wins Tennessee Martin they look like a talented team, and when we beat them 35 to seven, I was like, okay, we had a close game with Iowa. We blew Tennessee Martin out. That's what we supposed to do because they came to our home. We, we, you know, we can go on a uh, winning streak. Yeah. And I didn't want to look too far ahead of um, the overall picture. I wanted to take it game by game and just keep chipping away, keep chipping away because I knew the talent, I knew the coaches, I believed in the coaches, I believed in the players around me that we're right there. You know, we're right there and we're going to go on a run. Tennessee Martin, we kind of handled them at home. Then we go to Army and it's kind of a crazy game. Here, the pistol. Looking to throw, he does, wide open up the near sideline, a ton of room into Black Knight's territory, goes Luke Ekes. How about that for a first play on the road? Really pretty simple, they, they bring a player in motion, but they have a tight end slash H back in the backfield. He fires to the flat and no one goes with him. We made our we made our possessions at, uh, on offense count. Lynch on the move, fires, and Ashford makes a nice catch inside the five yard line. I remember us scoring really fast on Army and like we almost wanted to slow it down. Simmons had a great catch, great one-handed catch in the back of the and end zone. Goal from the two. He's looking to the tight end instead now. The other option, that's going to be a tough play. And the tight end, he pulled that baby in with three players from Army's defense around him. And that is Semish pulling that in. That is one heck of a catch. Yeah, that, that game was phenomenal. And that atmosphere was just crazy. I mean, it was so awesome to be there. Here they come, and Tommy Lee Lewis on the reverse in open field. He's got a ton of room. He's going to walk in. 
A touchdown for Northern Illinois. Tommy Lee Lewis, you're not going to stop that. A 21-yard touchdown run. I remember an Army game for sure. <laughs> I remember an Army game because uh, I, uh, I got I ended up supporting twice that game, <laughs> and that's when my confidence was my as me personally constant confidence going up in myself and as an in for the offense too. Now he's looking to chuck one downfield. Got a man out there. Perfect ball, and Tommy Lee Lewis has struck again. Jordan Lynch. Well, as good as you can throw that ball, and Tommy Lee Lewis doing the rest. Their fans are are awesome. They were the best trash talking fans I've ever been around. They knew everything about, you know, my girl, my girlfriend, who's my future wife now. It's they knew everything about everyone. It's uh, they were great. It was a great atmosphere to be around them. We made our possession on offense count. Pass is caught, and they get the first down. On the far side of the field, that was Perez Ashford, the Shaker Heights, Ohio native, in there making the catch in traffic. I think we have one turnover that came, and even playing at an academy school like that, like one turnover will get you beat. And we're fortunate that the defense got the stop when they needed to get the stop. Well, we finally showed up towards the end, so thank God. You know, right now, this Northern Illinois team is not being quite as physical as they need to be, but here on third and five is the perfect time to find a play where you can be physical against this option offense. Army nine for 16 on third down. Fake to Crusetti, Steelman spins, took a shot, they're gonna be short. He got it down to the 42, Jamal Bass, the sophomore, the first to get to him. But that system, like, our sophomore year, we blew him out. They couldn't hang, but for some reason, you know, you let somebody stick around. I don't think, going into that game, I don't think they knew they could beat, beat us. They probably, it was a little hope. But once we gave them hope and let them stick around, yeah, it was, it was, we were sore after that. Speaking for the defense, it was a rough game for us. But like, at the end, we end up pulling it through, you know. All wins, you know, a win is a win. You don't see that offense very often, you know, these days. And even, you know, 10 years ago, you didn't see it. But our defense, figured it out when they needed to figure it out. Um, and that was kind of without, you know, jumping too far ahead, but that was kind of the season as it went on. It's offense might have struggled, defense got her back. Defense might have struggled, offense had their back. They were so respectful after the game. And, you know, we went over to their side and I think we were singing, I, I, I forget what we were singing, but the whole atmosphere was just like amazing. We were able to win those close games, so it kind of got our confidence up that we're never out of it. And I just saw the team kind of bond around those experiences. The receivers right and left, now a little shovel pass across the line of scrimmage. It is complete, Martel Moore, loose to the left sideline, 20, 15, 10, 5. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Touchdown. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Yeah, this game to me is is where we really started to take off. I think I remember that game just being like a, a pound for pound, like who's gonna be the toughest team game. They worked out of the shotgun. Chris will take the snap five yards back. Sets up in rush, take it down. Winsor again. Chris back to throw once again, being rushed, and Chris is down. Chris is gonna go down. It's uh, confidence for me when, you know, we're beating a power five opponent. Whether it's Kansas or not, it's a power five opponent. Dave Dorn of Coach of course, coached at KU for four years. Don't think that isn't important to him. Third down nine, Lynch is going to run it. Angles wide, 30. Lynch around the corner, 35, 40. Lynch, 45. And pushed out of bounds up near the 48-yard line. We beat them, and that's where my confidence, you know, I started walking a little taller. I started believing. I started, you know, in the teammates, too, we just kind of had just the feeling of going to the morning lifts the next day, just that swagger, like, we know what we got here, and it's finally starting to roll, and it's starting. the results are starting to pay off now. Both of these teams, each with three timeouts remaining for the final nine minutes, 56 seconds. Lynch is back to throw. Throws it far side. Ashford to grab it to 40. Ashford shot by the bounds. 45-yard line. Still in Husky territory. Perez Ashford, big strike that time. Lock stop with 9.24 left to go. Snap to Lynch. Lynch throws it across the middle. Caught by Moore at the 30. First down, Huskies. We did like a quick quarterback sneak and and Jordan um, 
Jordan Lynch was uh, just kept pushing the pile, and it turned out to be like a 12-yard gain on a quarterback sneak. Third down a yard to go, and here's Jordan Lynch. I mean, he's still on his feet, sneaking. Lynch is still loose. Lynch gets inside the 15. I mean, it just wouldn't stop. We end up pulling out, pulling out with the victory, and I think that showed us we can also run the ball. We need to, if we need to win in an old school fashion, or if we need to throw the ball, or you know, to win a to win a football game. But uh, we did, we, we did what we had to do to win the game, and I think after that point, our confidence was just uh, probably through the roof, and we just hit the ground and we we were going. This was a special team. They could tell by um, their resilience um, throughout those games. Yeah, it was it was kind of fun to see how they. Even on the sidelines, you could sense it, um, that, hey, we still got this, we're still in this, um, you know, the hard way, you know, the whole thing. I mean, they, they, they really express themselves in, in true Husky spirit. We were stepping on the field and there's nothing you can do. You pick your poison, who you wanted to try to stop. You want to try to load the box and stop myself and Cam Stingley and Akeem Daniels, and who's going to cover Martel Moore, Deron Brown, Tommy Lee Lewis on the outside? It's uh, but I, I thought the coaches to give the coaches credit and Rod Carey a lot of credit. Like they found out exactly what they had. You know, it took Rod a little bit with the team, you know, how to call plays and you know who he had. But he found out exactly who he had with myself and the weapons around me, um, how to call the game, and he built he built the system around the quarterback. You know, Rod did a really good job of really tuning some things and building the system around me and without having to be too difficult too. He let me be an athlete at the end of the day and play football. There were certain games where you felt like the offense really gelled and other games where you felt like the defense kind of really gelled. And even our special teams that year, they were very, very good um, and solid, just so consistent throughout the year. That was probably the one thing that People may not remember just how good our special teams were that year. We just felt like we were better than all Mac teams, honestly. I think we felt like we were tougher, we were better, we worked harder, and uh, we just kind of wanted it more. Like for, in our era, we kind of think we, now I'm, I'm gonna speak, I'm, I'm gonna speak for Jimmy and Aiden. And I think we felt like we ran the Mac, honestly. Just beating Kansas, you know, making up from the year before. I want to say that we lost against them. Uh, so coming off that game, that's when the offense uh, they end up forming it forming their uh, identity. Uh, Jordan Lynch was becoming a man uh, at that time. We didn't, just like T. Lee said, like, we felt like we were going to blow Central Michigan out. We were battle tested and we were ready for any MAC team, to be honest with you. No MAC team was going to stand in our way. Lynch now sets up shotgun or he's going to fake the handoff. He's going to run it left side. Lynch to the 40 and Jordan Lynch breaks the tackle. Inside the 35, he's got the first down. Second and six, 24 yard line of the Chippewas. Tight end, the motion man to the short side. Pitch back, Leighton settled. Couple of Chippewa defenders gets away, comes back the other way to the right. He is to the 20 15. Take it down from behind inside the 15. You had to send a message. Now you have to send the other half of that message. You've got the stamp of the envelope, now you have to seal it. Hand off, Akeem Daniels around the left-hand side, all the way down to the nine-yard line. Push down, and once again, into the waste management green zone, goes the Northern offense. Jordan Lynch straight ahead, got the Northern Illinois touchdown. Touchdown, Huskies. And a bit of breathing room. 33-21 to the point after coming down. So it's first down, 38-yard line of Central Michigan Territory. The line of scrimmage now. Chipton, the give of the ground, trying to step outside. Chipton, where they had him, but the jersey pulls it away. And Zerlon Chipton, second effort, loose football. Loose football, and Huskies have it. Pick your poison on who you wanted to stop. You know, you couldn't load the box, you know, because we have too many playmakers that can beat you over the top and go the distance. This has been Perez Ashford time here this afternoon when they yep. needed a big play. They've gone to number seven. He's your possession guy. Ashford is on the near side. They'll throw the opposite side. This pass, that's caught. That's Jamison Wells. 
And Akeem Daniels, chanted to the backfield, snaps, going to go to Lynch, airs it out to the near side, he's got a man, and the pass caught, having to reach back and make the grab one-handed. Can you believe that, Tommy Lee Lewis? Hey, cue up the highlight film right there. That is the circus in town. Tommy Lee Lewis, almost a 360, over his outside shoulder. I think it took coordinators in the MAC. Um, I don't think they ever figured it out in the, in the two years, to be honest with you, but um, no, we had some special teams. There's two games that stick out, Ball State and Western Michigan. Um, they, uh, when we started the game, they had these scripted plays that were less like, you know, double throwbacks and all this stuff. Um, and so we knew as a defense that they were going to try to throw everything at us. Line there. Winning again to throw the pass is picked away by Jimmy Ward. Makes the grab of the 35, comes right, 45-50, Ward on his feet, and take it off his feet. Wait. Right at and midfield, 88, the guy Ward. that got him, Azeem fakes the tight end. As a defense, we kind of got better as the game got on. We made great adju adjustments. I, I, I remember our sideline, we're just talking to each other. Our defensive line was just like, we were so in sync, like we were so in tune. Like we would tell people like, okay, on the left side, this guy's always coming down. And, you know, we, we just always had each other's back. And, you know, the adjustments that we made during the game at halftime, um, always put us in a better spot to, to win. He's gonna be over 300 again, six time in his career. Winning once more, and he's just a junior. Now stands in the pocket, passes, tipped up in the air, and then finally intercepted. Santa Catarina came up with it. Tipped by one of the Huskies, then by one of the Cardinals. Jamil Smith got a hand on it, and then in the Michael end, it was Santa Catarina that finally came away with it. The offense did their thing once again, uh, but and we was playing. You know, we had a we had a good reason to play too. You know, we were trying to fight for the stock, the corn stock, the trophy. With Backfield is pretty much empty. Lynch is going to call his own number. And Lynch, 30, 35. He's got the first down, 40. Lynch, 50. Lynch behind the secondary. 30's on his way. 20, 15, 10. They're not going to catch it. Touchdown, Huskies. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. 3.03 to go. And there's a little bit of breathing room at Schumann Stadium, 34 to 23, Northern Illinois. The play was called Kryptonite. He dialed up Kryptonite and King James ran the wheel out the backfield and win it, win it late in the game. Second at a very long seven for the Huskies. They chew up some clock. Lynch, play action fakes, gonna throw near sideline, passes, caught Daniels, 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! He's got the touchdown! Touchdown, Northern Illinois to King Daniels! Great block downfield by Martell Moore to create some interference. A good hitch and go, and boy, what a nice throw on the hands, on time, on target. Well executed play, and Northern Illinois, like lightning, is back on the board. I think we all kind of grew up, like, grew up through the program, and so we all knew each other very well, and we just, it just worked, like, perfectly. <laughs> and there was not a lot of overcoaching. It was a player-driven team. Um, that's kind of what sticks out to me as we're getting this thing rolling. That's caught by Moore at the 15, takes him to the five, the boy stretches for the goal line, he's got the touchdown. He was being dragged down at the two, sticks the ball across the chalk stripe, touchdown, Northern Illinois. Michael up at a yard and a half for the first down, fourth and about four of their abouts for the touchdown. Lynch will take the snap, angles flip, he's got a touchdown, Huskies. Then will start to the left side, he's into the end zone, touchdown, Northern Illinois. Empty. Lynch in the pocket. Steps to the right side. Lynch gonna have to run a 10-5. Lynch breaks a tackle, cuts back to the left. He's got the touchdown. Indeed. Under center, Lynch takes the handoff, throws Enzo wide open. Touchdown, Huskies. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Nobody near Chase and Shepler for the touchdown. 
23-7, Northern Illinois. Dalton Williams, and nowhere to go. It's Baxter, pops it off the right side to Williams on the left side. Deron Brown, motion short side. Lynch wants to throw, spins away. Lynch runs it up the gut. Lynch has got the first down, breaks the track of 30, 20. Lynch, 10, 5, touchdown! Oh, my goodness. Western Michigan's always had a great program, and, you know, playing them on the road. Western Michigan kickoff, and Tommy Lee from the 13. Scampers left side, 30, 35. Tommy Lee to the 50, and trips over the 50-yard line. Do that. Lynch now with the snap on second and nine. Gives it the heave hole, long down the near sideline. That pass is caught. That pass is caught down inside the 20. In your hands. I was used to think maybe it was a spring sport they were going after. Lynch throws it near side, looking for Tommy Lee. Makes the grab of the goal line. Tumbles into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Backfield is completely empty except for Van Troop again. Will backpedal near the 25, being rushed and is going down. That'll be a sack. Pogar led the way. They're running trick plays, and you know they're not running fundamentally sound football, and they're up 21 to seven. So. Us kind of having an old line being young and myself being young, like, how are we going to respond? This is this is the time, you know. But once again, we stayed on course. Uh, coaches did a really good job of calling plays and letting us be athletes and, you know, playing to our advantage. Good yard line. Backfield again is empty. This time it's Van Tubergen back to throw. Dances near the 38, tries to run out of trouble, and Baxter got him. Here's Lynch with it off the left side. Lynch 15, Lynch 10. They dig the football. Lynch 5, Lynch goal line. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. That was a Brunswick run, a bowling ball run again. It was almost the same as last week as he just runs over a couple DBs. Is, is the pressure they've been able to extend. They'll toss out to the near side. That one is batted away. Tipped down by Jimmy Ward. 54-yard field goal. The wind is kind of a crosswind more than anything. It might be a slightly to the advantage of Matthew Sims. There's the placement by Ryan Nair. Kick is not quite there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they give it to him. Fourth and two. Will Western Michigan see the ball offensively again? Lynch is going to throw it. Little flare pattern that's caught at the 15 to the 10 and taken down at the five yard line. That's Shepler, if I'm not mistaken. There's one guy that uh, that didn't get a lot of credit that year, uh, but uh, Jason Shepler was was a big part of the offense oh. that year, and he uh, he helped the offensive line look as good as it did because of how well he he was able to collapse that line on power. Uh, he was such a strong and just a smart guy. He could read defenses and and put us in a good position to, to be successful on every play. So that, that guy definitely deserves a lot of credit for uh, for our success on offense. I'm going to tell you, Western came out with everything they had. And I told you they would. And you manned up. You came back from a deficit. <coughs> Defense started fast in the second half. Offense took advantage. And a lot of guys made plays. A lot of guys. How about Shep on the last four hey. hey. How about Matt Sims, 54-yard oh, hey. hey, that's a school record, man. Oh, and then late, kind of late in the year, kind of Jordan really became a force. Yeah, the attention definitely became, um, get, you know, became about him because I mean there was there was talk beginning about the Heisman push, you know. And I remember you and I having that conversation, and we we sat there and like, how do we do this without distracting from the success of the team? How do we, you know, continue to promote? Um, this idea, it might be far-fetched, but wow, look at his numbers, look what he's done nationally and against some of the teams that we played. So, um, you know, it was all beginning to, to kind of come together and the team was really doing well and he was leading that effort um, in a really exemplar way.
Action is jacked on the play by Sean Progar of NIU. Playing Toledo Thursday night, we knew we knew we had to have this game to go to the MAC championship to you know accomplish our goals that we had uh, during the season. That game was always the game in the preseason. We never got a lot of love, and we you know we're the type of players that you know we weren't three star players. We weren't all these you know players coming in, and so we never had the best recruiting class or whatever. But we, I knew that we were hard workers, and I knew that we were guys who had something to prove. We always got picked third and, you know, in the MAC to win that, to win that side. And um, because we never had the big recruiting class, you know, I, I was a one, two star recruit coming out of, you know, Mount Carmel High School. And I got an offer from Jerry Kill, you know, because I, I went to a one day camp. I had one offer and I committed the next day. It's, uh, we really got that program rolling and Coach Novak, Coach Kill, um, Coach Dorn, uh, Coach Kerry, you know, and Coach Hammock's doing a great job now. But the, back in the day, we got that program rolling with recruiting, majoring in Chicago, where kids had a chip on their shoulder. They knew NIU football, and they knew each other when they walked in the doors because they were competing against each other. From Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, a very important Mid-American Conference matchup as the Toledo Rockets take on the Northern Illinois Huskies. If NIU wins this game tonight, it'll be the champion of the Mid-American Conference's West Division for the third year in a row. The Huskies, 9-1 overall. They've won nine straight. They're 6-0 in MAC play. Northern Illinois feels it can pressure the quarterback regularly with just a four-man rush. They don't blitz much. Yeah, well, if he gets the ball out in about two seconds, they're not going to get much pressure at all. You see a big personnel change for Toledo. They're going big. Bunch of offensive linemen into the game. Dave Doran's defense on its heels this entire drive. Flewellen, touchdown. The Toledo Rockets take the opening kickoff and march right down the field for the game's first score. Back into Calv, Illinois. Toledo leads Northern Illinois seven to nothing in the first quarter. As we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. Northern Illinois trying to reorganize on the sideline defensively. Toledo took the opening kickoff march right down the field. Toledo must win tonight and beat Akron, which has not won a game in the MAC this year. And they would advance to Ford Field, play in the MAC championship game for the first time since 2004. If Northern wins tonight, they'll be the MAC West champs for the third year in a row. Last year they won the MAC in Dave Dorn's first season. Tommy Lee Lewis returned the first two kickoffs of the game for NIU for touchdowns last year at Toledo. He wanted a chance to do it this time. Maybe <laughs> looked like he wasn't going to make the 15 yard line for the game Northern Illinois honoring its 13 seniors. They're the winningest class in the history of Husky football. 21 and one here at home. They haven't lost a home game since September of 2009 when they lost to Idaho. A lot of streaks on the line here tonight. They've won nine in a row overall after losing their opener by one point to Iowa. They've won 14 straight Mid American Conference games. They've won 20 games in a row here at home. They didn't count that as a home game. The NCAA considered it a neutral site game against Iowa because it was at Soldier Field in Chicago, about 70 miles from here. We are west and a little bit north of the great city of Chicago tonight. Llewellyn a juggling catch of the Terrence Owens pass and he gets buried across the near sideline. Jimmy Ward led the Husky tacklers a gain of three. Toledo went right down the field. Twelve plays goes 72 yards in just under five minutes with their first possessions with the play clock at one. Under pressure and sacked. Back of the 18 yard line by Ken Bishop. Owens on second and 11. It's intercepted by the outstanding safety Jimmy Ward. His third of the year for the junior from Mobile, Alabama. One thing, too, is they had one of the coaches that used to coach with us. And now he was the defensive coordinator, Coach Two, over there. So 
he knew exactly, um, if anything, you know, Tuke knew exactly what kind of team he was getting himself into with playing NIU, with being around us. And some, you know, Tuke even recruited, you know, some of us there. But I just know that was uh, going into that game, you know, he, he knew exactly he had a game plan. Everyone has a game plan, right, on kind of how to stop us and this or that. And I think they did a really good job defensively. But Tukowitz is smart. He would relay that down to the Toledo sidelines that whatever look they're getting, that's the look they'll be playing. I saw it earlier a couple times. A little air guitar. Third down and eight. They are in field goal range. Lynch, boy, given all kinds of time by this offensive line. And then waits for something to open up, and he has a first down. Jamison Wells. The junior with his 14th catch of the year. He's a dual sport athlete. He's the starting center fielder on the NIU baseball team, one of the top stolen basemen in the match. Yeah, give credit to that offensive line because he had more, number one, open in the flat. He missed them. But again, the composure of Lynch and allowing the play to develop, you can't ask the back seven to cover that long. Lynch. Down to the five. We talked with Dave Dorn about Lynch yesterday. He's the first year starter. They had Chandler Harnish, fine quarterback for the last couple of years, drafted as Mr. Irrelevant by Indianapolis in the most recent NFL draft. He said, We knew Jordan Lynch was special, but we didn't know how he'd fare because we had no starters on the offensive line. And the offensive line play has been one of the great stories of this season. They have gelled together, and the team is 10th in the country in rushing. Great throw by Lynch and an over the shoulder catch for a touchdown by Martell Moore. Ward's interception put them back in business. The two tough games I remember that I feel like that year is normally is our rival games and that's Toledo and Ball State. Them the two games that I feel like it, it always comes down to because they, they have the most talent on their, on their roster. Well, while we was in college, they had the most talent on their roster. The defense kind of kept us in that striking range in the first half, and the offense got the uh, got it going in the second half and able to close it out. They're in the red zone, trying to take the lead for the third time. Fires his receiver fell down and it is intercepted by Rashawn Melvin. Lynch took a hit, bounced forward for the first down, dragged Jermaine Robinson with him after he got pinballed by Danny Farr. Well, you can see why Dave Gorham says the thing he likes most about this kid, you think it'd be his arm, his running ability. No, it's all about him and his competitiveness. And you can see it when he runs the football. Elsewhere in the back tonight, Ball State a winner. Catch and run by Lou Geekus. He might be off to the races, and it's a touchdown saving tackle by Mark Singer. The Heisman campaign back in full effect. Lynch is a career high, 383 yards passing. It's all about attacking the flats and attacking the outside. When you give them space, then you have blockers downfield. And a good job by Brown, number four, down there blocking for his buddy Ekus. Good hustle by Singer to get him down. That was it. You know, as soon as we got the wheels turning, it was going to be very hard uh, to stop us. Lynch into the secondary. And putting the exclamation point on a huge night. Well, he's starting to convince me that he's worthy of more serious consideration in this Heisman situation, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. And a good job by Shepard, the tight end, to cave that edge, make it a short corner. And you see Lynch with just toughness, protecting the football, breaking tackles, always falling forward. Carrying folks. Well, he's going to maybe go for 600 yards tonight as they take a knee. Jordan was just special in general, man, because he practiced the same every day. So he was, I, I tell people to this day, man, I, 
it's nobody ever played with that. I just want to go to bat for it so much. Just the way he gonna, just the way he go out there and lay it on the line. As a poor quarterback, like he Jovan just he is a special player and a fun player to play with. Yeah, especially with uh, with the younger group we had. I mean, just the leadership out of Jordan was great. Um, we we learned real quick that we we had to you know block the whole from whistle to whistle because he's gonna break five, six, or seven tackles and keep going. So we're up on the second level, third level. We just we just couldn't stop. You got to give credit, and credit is due. Like, I don't know if – I'm pretty serious. A few articles that came out around the school. But Jordan Lynch was getting all the praise. He deserved it. But you got to give credit to the offensive line. Just what we was able to do on the ground. Like, because a lot of yards Jordan got, he got on the ground. But we did not even think about all the running backs that were scoring touchdowns because of the offensive line. Like, yeah, they were breaking tackles, but – the offense line had to move people to create holes for these running backs in for Jordan to run that quarterback power in the middle or to do, you know, create lanes. Number three, of Team Daniels on the carry, touchdown Husky. Double wing of Ivan, if you would. He's back to throw now, being stretched out of the pocket, out of the right side. Winters rounds home. Winters going to twist him down. Back inside the 25. He'll nose it. Receivers to the right side. Winters going to throw the football. He's going to drop it across the middle. The pass is complete. Far side line. He's to the 20. Four, the 10, 5. Looking for the end zone. Got it. Touchdown, Huskies. First attempt to Michigan. Back on the goes in the pocket. He is going to get taken down. A lot of people were talking about Kent State and going to BCS Bowl. There was never any hope for NIU to go to BCS Bowl. You know, it was, I just remember the, you know, the questions I was getting asked and you turn on ESPN and they're talking about Kent State can be the, you know, the first team going to the BCS Bowl. And they had Roosevelt Knicks, they had Dre Archer, that was a big name. And these guys were playing, you know, they were playing well and they were the team to beat. Um, NIU were underdogs. and you know, really overlooked. You know, we weren't supposed to be in this position with being picked, you know, third or fifth or whatever it was in, in the MAC that year. Um, so really there was no, there was no pressure on us. I, I kind of liked the, the spot we were at. Two ranked teams for the MAC championship, hoping to bust the BCS in 2012. Jordan Lynch, the MAC player of the year in his first year as the Northern Illinois quarterback, and he's a Husky because this is the only program who gave him the chance to play quarterback. Third in the nation in total offense. And we should see a lot of Jordan Lynch tonight. Well, I think the message was just, you know, we deserve to be here. And, and I, I do agree that the credit was, you know, more so on the Kent State side for their success that season because they had some big names too. Um, well, we were hungry. We had a chip on our shoulder and, and we knew we, uh, we can go in there and win. And uh, what a game that was, just the uh, overtime and everything, that was amazing. Um, it, was, it was a really special game. And everything else has been impressive about Lynch and the Husky offense, but not so far tonight. Rolling again on first and 10, just nothing there for Lynch, so he throws it incomplete. Lynch complete. For a first down across the 37, he finds Jamison Wells again for that's the second third down conversion. Two years ago, Northern Illinois was here where their head coach was Jerry Kill. Miami of Ohio stormed back to win that game. Then last year, they won in come behind fashion over Ohio. Lynch trying to get rolling in the ground game. Gets about nine there before Wallet brings him down. Yeah. And here's Matthew Sims. I doubt they'll try the fake here. <laughs> Twenty seven yarder for the junior from Hannibal, Missouri. Matthew Sims, twenty seven yarder sneaks in there. You know, underdogs just keep going out there and doing our thing and keep chipping away. And um, and that's what we did. Archer's going to get it and wrestle down in the backfield for a loss. 
Ken Bishop drops Archer to force fourth down. Great job by Bishop. He was not fooled or influenced by the counteraction that goes to the left. Watch him come back inside, comes off his block. A good tackle. Right in the middle of your screen there, he disengages from the block of the center and gets involved. It's having your eyes in the right place. Got the hands up there around the top of the jersey, but brought Archer down. Melchiori, good punt. Sebastiano from the 10. Room to run. Back to the 41. Angelo Sebastiano brought down by Urjavec. Empty backfield on third and nine. They really spread them out. Martel Moore, who has 11 touchdowns on the year, is number one for Northern Illinois. He's at the bottom of the formation. You look inside, you got four linemen, five blockers. Lynch heaves to Martel Moore for the touchdown. They've got so many receivers all over the place, and only five guys really near the line of scrimmage to handle a running quarterback. I mean, that's the design of that. Force you to defend the field, and then see if you can tackle the bull of the quarterback. Second and goal. Who else but Lynch? Oh. There's the bull. Is he down just shy? He appears to be. Luke Wallet met him at the one. Are you catching or are you hitting? Well, guess what? With Lynch, you often catch. Man, he lowers the shoulder and delivers the big, big boom on Luke Wallet. Power eye backfield on third and goal. Lynch hands off. Daniels goes flying, reaching, scoring. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. I remember King Daniels kind of taking over. He was running. He started running the ball really hard and probably getting like eight yards of pop, nine yards of pop. And we said, like, I just remember everybody on the sideline, like, keep giving the keeping the ball. Lynch is going to pass on second down. It's going to throw to the flat. That's caught by Daniels. Kent State territory down the sideline, 30, 25. They never stopped believing they would win. <laughs> but the sideline was great throughout the entire game because, you know, I stood down there probably most of the second half. And it was, um, it was fun to see them rally around each other, even though they were on the same roller coaster everyone else was. Here's your big third down. Lynch straight ahead. First down and more for the Huskies. And we showed that. I, we were up 14, I believe, in the fourth quarter, and um, we, we tried to blow it, you know, to be honest with you. They, I, I fumbled an exchange. It was just like they scored. I fumbled an exchange on a handoff. They picked it up, and I just remember that being like slow motion. I was on my knees just watching them run. When James Sutherland gets hot, watch out. Fumble picked oh. up by Kent State. Touchdown, Zach Hitchens into the end zone. The golden flashes. Get a huge break. If you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan, maybe a Clemson Tiger fan, Texas Longhorn fan, hoping that a MAC team doesn't get the BCS, you're a little nervous. You don't like this. Zone read play. They've done that about a couple thousand times in practice and games, and they mishandle it here with a chance to salt the game away. It becomes a fumble recovery and touchdown for Zach Hitchens. And just like that, a 14-point lead is gone. In 15 seconds. Wow. Fake the fly sweep. Lynch sacked. And now Northern Illinois will have to use one of those timeouts. Rolling under 30, no timeout. Rolling to 25. And they're going to substitute. 20 seconds, and now the Huskies may just take it to overtime. Yeah, they're going to let it go. I mean, once you had the sack, it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. You were going to be in a tough situation. 
How fun on a Friday night wow. with two ranked teams in the MAC championship <laughs> and the potential for a BCS buster. We are headed to overtime. Matthew Sims from 40 yards. He got it. On to the second overtime. A potential BCS spot on the line between Northern Illinois and Kent State, and we're going to our second overtime. Akeem Daniels on first down, inside the five for Northern Illinois. That is the fly sweep we've seen a number of times tonight. Uh, a head start, a running start for Daniels coming around, getting to the edge. First and goal, Huskies. We're not going to see any trickeration down here, are we? I would be surprised. And if I'm a Northern Illinois Husky fan, I know I want the football in the hands of number six, Jordan Lynch. Yep. Lynch dives for the touchdown. Huskies on top in the second overtime. Stone was the end of the game. Stone, Stone did. Oh, in Stone overtime, Stone right. had the, the. I think Bishop, Ken Bishop, rushed, had a good rush, and like he just threw it up. And Stone, Stone finally made a play. <laughs> second overtime, Spencer Keith hasn't completed a pass. Fourth down and eight. A MAC championship, a potential at the BCS and a major payday for Kent State and the MAC. It comes down to this. Keith rolling, throwing, intercepted. And the Kent State BCS dream comes to an end. The Northern Illinois Huskies win their second straight MAC championship. Stayed the course, we kept chipping away, and you know, we come up with a big drive, and you know, we end up you know sealing the deal, and defense got a huge stop at the end of the game. Let's go, Husky! Freshman got three motor wins. Good job. Yeah. So you here he goes. My second to the last time. Uh -huh. Huskies are Huskies and make a score two or three. Huskies are Huskies, the team to pull us through. Forward, together, forward, there's victory in view. My Huskies, my Huskies, and we're for right now. You bring it down. Huskies are Huskies and make a score two or three. Huskies are Huskies, the team to pull us through. Okay. Forward, together, forward. So Saturday morning, I got a call from Coach Doran and said, um, you remember I talked to you about NC State? I said, yeah. He said, uh, well, they have a private plane waiting for me back in DeKalb, and um, I'm going to take the job. And I said, well, Dave, I'm driving back right now um, from Detroit, and um, I I would really, and I know you want to tell the team, so could you wait until I get there in order to do that? Because I want to be there with them. So I had called uh, the commissioner earlier that, well, late morning, uh, to let him know what was going to go on with the head coaching search. <laughs> and also let him know, um, you know, hey, you know, based on what I'm seeing, there's a real possibility here, but, um, you know, just, you, you do your thing and let us know where where we stand. And uh, you know my, the purpose of my call just was really to kind of let him know about Rod. And so around two o'clock that day, I'm, I was in the office and he called me and he said, uh, 
hey, Jeff, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing great, John. You have some news? And he said, hey, do you remember you asked me about going to a warm weather bowl game? And I said, yeah, uh, I hope you could get us in one. And he goes, well, would you take the orange bowl? <laughs> and I said, what? And it's still emotional, <laughs> you know? It was fun to to see that, I mean, to, to hear that and know that um, that team's hard work was going to get paid off with the victory. And, you know, the, the, their victory was going to get paid off with this opportunity to go and represent NIU in the Orange Bowl. And I was just so happy. And I just remember JD face. I remember a couple guys' face, faces. And I just remember when Jeff ended up announcing it and I was just looking around. I'm looking. I'm like, oh, yeah, these guys are excited because I, I think they told us what team we was going to play, too. It was incredible. It was um, truly our entire university came together at that point. The community itself, I mean, certainly the people who have supported and invested in the program, their investment, their belief in the program really meant something and made a difference. So we find out we're going to the uh, to the Orange Bowl, BCS Bowl. Um, the, the crazy thing was in the ball, I don't know if you remember this, it, it was a few years before this actually happened. We might've been um, sophomores at the time, but during, um, it was it was August camp, we would have special you know speakers or whatever come in and um, Jeff Jordan was a guy who came in and you know, Jeff was talking, he had his, uh, his preseason highlights of what's gonna happen that year and this was, it was before I was starting, Chandler was the starter and they're talking about the team and everything. And, you know, he had us going 13 and 0, winning the MAC championship. And then he had his projections on bowls and he had us going playing Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl, a BCS bowl. So like Jeff Jordan, that was his vision for us, kind of what he saw. If I lied to some of you guys, uh... Yeah, but uh, <laughs> go ahead, guys. This is what we're going to be wearing for the game. Adidas, NIE for working together and make it all happen and we love our equipment room, our equipment managers always uh, making the, making things happen for us. So man, we excited about the new uniforms and look at them, check them out. They don't get no better than this. They came through with a clutch. We're excited about it. <laughs> What do you think, Naval? I like it. The Huskies right here. I like it. The only thing I didn't like is like we got new uniforms, and I know everyone gets excited about that, but like we we presented the uniforms the night before, and like pants didn't fit. And here we are, like exchanging pants sizes, and like usually I'm a large pants, and like they were just skin tight. You know mm -hmm. the things that they look sweet on TV, but like. I wish we would have stayed true to like our old, I wanted to wear the black pants that had like number 87 crossed out, 14 crossed out, now six, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It went around the whole waistband of like, just recycled pants from 1985. I totally do wish that we had the black pants cause they had to put a bunch of footballs in my pants to stretch them out. Cause they were just, they just didn't fit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then also the red was bleeding on to the jersey so like the bottom of your jersey was just like 
red, pinkish looking. thing we, we focused on was obviously the film and, and just studying our opponents they, they did have a really good front uh front seven uh with a lot of future nfl guys um and they had a like tremendous speed so we, we knew we had uh you know our work cut out for us and we understood uh what needed to be done to move the ball on them and we had to go you know into that work uh that bull prep uh, understanding what we were going to be uh, up against and y'all got to come to play you play florida state like this 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 is a serious team like you got to do your job. We got to we got to go out there and we got to play as one. So that's what I was worried about. But like I said, I should have lived in the moment, but I couldn't because I was just thinking about that's an opportunity. I knew what I had to do. I knew, I knew I needed to go out there and play good to help the defense, you know, give us a chance to win, you know, because I knew it was going to be tough for the offense because how many players they had that was going to get drafted. How many They had a lot of players who I knew was going to get drafted from that Florida State defense we're not even talking about the office so 10 players got drafted so i was like uh yeah this it's gonna be a different game we went out there and put our best foot forward and and you know obviously the result wasn't as what we wanted but uh the experience was awesome and uh it was you know the first time i was ever in miami and i was 19 years old it was my first bowl experience i was excited because i'm uh i might have i have fam a lot of family in the stands and then we had we had we, we pulled out the new jerseys like I, I tell a lot of you, that's probably one of the most exciting games I played in. It was fun. Like, I mean, I, like, like my mindset was like, hey, this is a chance. Like, honestly, obviously, you got aspirations and dreams to go to the NFL. So, this is a chance to try to do your best out here and, like, try to, like, you know, show what you can do against this talent. And, um, like I said, I was excited, man. We was ready, we was, we was ready to go. They're not just happy to be here, folks. Motivation, confidence, in abundance, as well as the thought of silencing the critics. All we did was do our job and win. So there's always going to be people out there, you know, not wanting us in there. We've all been told we're not good enough to play in other conferences. So we've already, that's how, like, we live life, basically. If you come to Northern Illinois, you've been told somewhere else that you're not good enough to play. So we hear that all the time. Every time they go out there, they have something to prove. And it doesn't matter if it's in the Orange Bowl or against any one of our opponents we played this year. Um, they have a chip on their shoulder. That's the way they play. As we welcome the Northern Illinois Huskies. First time a team from the Mid-American Conference has taken the field to play in a BCS Bowl. 
Took an overtime win in their conference title game and then an envelope please six spot jump reveal in the standings to earn this trip to South Florida. With a record setting quarterback a confident bunch they won't accept being dismissed as unworthy or overmatched. These Huskies are ready for prime time. And it was just like the most amazing thing. There's fireworks going off. There's a guy on a, on a horse, you know, in the middle of, of the field. You know, there's a ton of red. There was so much red. I was so happy to see that. I was so proud to see that. Um, a ton of a ton of our fans came down. Uh, there was so much red. That was so good to see. Um, I saw my family. My sister um, was yelling so loud. I felt like I could hear her. It was so awesome. Like I remember. Coach Nielsen saying, when you go out there, take one minute to just look around and see everything. And I, I remember when I was running out, I wasn't really paying attention, but once we got to our, our side, I just took a minute and just like did a panoramic of everything. Now you're here at the BCS Bowl game. What makes you believe that this team is ready to take on Florida State? Because everything we've thrown at them all year, they've done. And they've come back from and they've handled all the adversity, so I know we'll handle this. And Florida's athleticism has allowed them to be second in the nation in total defense, but you have a dual threat quarterback in Jordan Lynch that has already broken four NCAA records this season. What are you going to do schematically to put them in good situations to be successful? Do what we do all the time, try to get them in space, let them make plays. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Joe? That defense that we talked so much about before kick showing up exactly the way we thought they would. This is a fake here. They are going with a fake punt and pulling it off is Desroy Maxwell. How about that? From their own 32 into Florida State territory. Set up. This is all about numbers on the punt team. If you get them, you take them. And he was. Desroy got to the edge. Not the fastest guy, but he got walked down. But a big first down and their first one of the night. They needed something. Carey wasn't going to let the game just linger. First head coaching gig. And he goes with that in the Orange Bowl. And now Lynch met at the line of scrimmage again. First head coaching gig. And he goes with that in the Orange Bowl. And now Lynch met at the line of scrimmage again. But he's going to try everything on the front end with formations, which is what he's doing right now. Receivers stacked to the near side. They go to the far side, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Martel Moore, who was being ridden by Xavier Rhodes. Now, here's the difference, okay? Xavier Rhodes, that looks close, but he starts the bump right from the start. Watch, gets his hands on him, continues with it the whole time. Now, he's got to pull off that eventually. They may have gotten away with one right there, but... Rhodes is a big physical corner. So out comes Matthew Sims, the junior from Hannibal, Missouri, who's been good on the short range stuff this year. This attempt will be coming from 25 yards. And the Huskies are on the board. That Florida State defense, they put up the wall once they got inside the 10. Florida State's only allowed three first quarter touchdowns on the year. It was a win of ourselves just to be there, but I, I remember in the third quarter, you know, it's uh, I ended up throwing a pick down the sidelines on their sidelines, but you know, if I would have threw the ball away and we kick a field goal, we're, it's a closer game now. It's a, We're in that game. The entire time, um, I felt like I wanted to be as close as I could to the team to kind of relish their experiences. And so um, I'll never forget when we drove over one of those causeways to the hotel and there was the big billboard that the university put up and everyone, all the players on the bus were like taking pictures and going crazy and just, you know, realizing, wow, this, this is truly a big deal. We competed, we stayed with them, we played with them, um, you know, and it's, uh, like I said, what a tremendous, tremendous season just to, just to be there, you know, and um, have, especially, you know, have my family 
you know, down there at a BCS bowl and, you know, have my younger brother, I remember picking him up at pregame warmups, picking him up over the bleachers and putting him on the field and just playing catch with him before security tried to handcuff me and throw me out. <laughs> uh, so just like little memories like that is what's sick with you for a lifetime. It's not the it's not about the end result of the game. I think it was more so beyond football. Like just even in the hotel, like the stuff in the hotel in uh, Rockford, like it's, that's the stuff that you remember. I remember most. Well, not remember most, but that's the stuff. If I think back, like the funny moments, and uh, it, it was a lot of funny moments. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Tommy. It's it's the small things like uh, that. You know you. You cherish and you look back on with fond memories. It's you know just even like the silly tape bowl trophy, uh, tape bowl tournaments we did during bowl season, and uh, just hanging out with the guys at the at the house or the hotel or going out to dinner. It's the small things that I you know I remember. The dinners before the games, we always had these kind of talks. It was like you know, um, it's like would you rather type things, and you know everybody would pick one one option, and I would never pick. But I would just judge everybody else for their like picks. Like, why would you pick that? You know, and I just remember we would just laugh the the, the entire time. Relationships, man. NIU, just the culture. Illinois, Chicago is everything, man. Like uh prime rib. My first time eating prime rib. Oh my god. They used to treat us. Oh my god, they used to treat us good on them hog games, prime rib slices. You know, the memories, you know, having, you know, going to New York and, you know, pick six and all that stuff, um, you know, that stuff doesn't happen, you know, without the the team, the coaches, you know, and so it just, for me, it was just like all the hard work that I've done over the years, you know, it all paid off at that at that point. The cookies they used to give us, the hot cocoa we used to drink at, at, at the hotel on home games, just, just everything, the fight song, just, man, just the parties we used to throw at, the, at my house afterwards, after we win. Me going to uh, going to the athletes party, and right after the athletes party, and we, we and get, a little, and get a little rough. NIU changed my life completely. Um, I, don't, I don't know where I would have been or what I, what I would have done without it, um, without playing. Uh, the friends I've made for life. But the main thing, what I think I was most proud of is the winning culture that we that we formed out there. We was winning and that's the reason why we had so much fun. That's the reason why we remember it so much because every year I was there, we were winning. We had a winning season every year. Four years in a row, I can't speak on everybody, but four years in a row, went to the next championship. I was in a bowl. I at least played 14 games each year. And I don't feel like it's, you know, like how I started, yeah, I wanted to go to this school, this school, this school, but I wasn't taking back at all. It's the team and the guys that make it special. You, like, you grow to love it. You got no choice but to grow to love it. And the people around, they're just good people. It was, it, like I say, when, if I do it over, I'll do it all the same way also. Like, if I could do it over, I'd do the same too. I'd pick the same school, and I hope that I'm in the same city. Cab, Illinois. It helped me become, helped me to become the person who I am today.